brought to you by Homes by Shane and produced by Danny Geo Productions. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Boots and Backstraps podcast. Come on now. On his own, looking for backstraps way deep in the woods. Tracking in a swamp to a hay field under the harvest moon. When the tags are filled, it's time to switch up our boots. Head down to the honky tonk, get us a swing dance or two. We're talking about boots and backstraps. Hey everybody, this is a show where we talk all things hunting and country music. From the classics through today. From big bucks to bull elk. We've got it all. Welcome to another episode of Boots and Backstraps. I am uh, your host Shane Michael, joined in studio as always by my co-host and country music legend Tom Cat. Come on now. How we doing sir? I'm doing great. This is uh, episode 5000 or whatever it is. <laughs> They're running together, aren't they? I might be rounding up. It seems like we've been sitting in this room like every day for the last week. <laughs> I know. It's, it's great, though, and what a beautiful day we have. It's going to be like 60 degrees. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we're in March. Can you believe it? You know, the, the month of uh, blizzards, and we haven't had a blizzard, and if it keeps going like this, we're going to have a really early, early spring. Well, I hope you didn't just jinx us with that whole yeah, blizzard business. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't believe in that. We're supposed to get a day this week where it could get a little cooler and get some rain and potentially snow mixed in, but they're saying 50s again by next end of the week, so that'll be good. You know what it means? Uh, turkey hunting's just around the corner. Yeah, how does that, I mean, what, is, what happens with that? They just push the season up? No, the season always stays the same. I've been out in the woods when turkey season has been literally, as far as the weather is concerned, a month early. Yeah. And I've been in there when all the foliage is full blown a yeah. month late. But if it keeps up like this, we're going to have a two month early weather wise season for turkey hunters. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, the buds have been out and starting to leaf like a week ago. Well, I have to say, I was inspired Thursday night by your smoked salmon. Oh. And so for the wife's birthday last night, in addition to a few other things that I made, I smoked two and a half pounds of a salmon slab with a really good marinade on it. Nice. And I was standing out in front of my smoker in a T-shirt. Oh. Yeah, so that was uh, really nice. We'll have to have you bring some of that salmon over to sample I will. one of these days. <laughs> yeah, I'll smoke some stuff and bring it up, and we can you know, nice. just do a little smorgasbord. Nice. Well, I think we need something to get this thing rolling, maybe a little uh, libation. What do you think, my friend? Well, I'm all for that. You know, uh, J- Jack Daniels, uh, we are in contact with them, and we're looking uh, forward to their sponsorship. Yeah. And possibly Coors Light and a lot of other people. So you might start seeing some commercials on our program. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. You're well, in addition to my Homes by Shane commercial, I mean, yeah, you got to keep <laughs> the lights on around here. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So Jack Daniels, uh, the single barrel option this for this podcast. I'm excited about it. Thank I've you. Al- I've already been partaking. So forgive me. The, you're the early guy. Every week she brings yours in and it's already, you know. Had a few sips on it. Well, I just started a little bit ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not too early, early. So we talked all about the WeFest on our last episode. And we did, yeah. We have Matt Mathune in, the new owner and producer, of as he likes Wefest. to call it. Yep. Matt's been around for a long time, and now he's got ownership of the show. It was pretty cool. I didn't understand the, or grasp, really, the total connection of his family having right. owned the property. Right, right. Supass Ranch for four decades or whatever it's been yeah um, more than four decades well you said mid 80s right uh i think they said in 85 so it'll be four decades in 20 25 20, 20 25 yeah. 20 whatever i just said he did just start <laughs> drinking a <laughs> <laughs> couple uh, of sips and you're going wonderful family ray Mathune, uh matt's dad yeah um yeah i'm so excited you know putting 35 years of my life into a, a music festival and a lot of blood, sweat, grow. and tears. Yeah, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and a lot of craziness, and a lot of hard work, and not just on my behalf, uh, yeah, on the hundreds of people that work there, and everyone had a common goal to make it successful, and then we became, for like two decades, maybe even close to three decades, uh, the largest in the world. Yeah, and 
and then it, we sold it, and then it deteriorated, and for whatever reason. Um, but now that it's in Matt Mathune's hands and their family and Live Nation, it's going to be. There, it might take a little while, especially with the COVID thing happening. Yeah, but uh, they'll get they'll get it back to where it was. I they have no will. doubt. Yeah, it's he obviously the family has a, a firm grasp on you know, what it was in its glory days oh, yeah. and, and a really firm grasp on what needs to happen to get it there. All the local sponsorship, the local involvement. Yeah. I think that was a big key to the um, unsuccess of uh, the last owner. Agreed. They uh, did everything from New York and New Hampshire and um, just totally eliminate the local uh, flavor. And Yeah, can't do that. I don't think so. It, it You wouldn't think it would be lost on them that – having a festival here and then sort of cutting that leg off of all the local involvement right, would be right. problematic, but right. it was lost on them. So here we are. Yeah. Well, well, I'm looking forward to what's going on. I know I'm going to be up there this year. And, um, you, are you, did you say that you're unavailable that weekend? Yeah. So that Saturday, um, I'm a groomsman in a wedding. Oh yeah. So there's the potential that we could maybe come up and, and hang out Thursday, Friday. Right. You know, it's obviously not too far of a drive. Just a few we'll get hours. some footage for our show. and Yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. Maybe get a couple of interviews. I know Jill seems like she's pretty motivated to go up, and Danny, I think, would like to go up also. And I think you probably could twist Kyle's arm for a couple of days, so we'll have to see if we can make that work. Yeah, get a camp spot. and Yeah, I think we've got fun. a few things we're talking about, maybe doing some remote yeah. stuff for this year to do some shows <laughs> remotely. But, you know, you know, Shane, um, I, I have one stipulation. Yeah. I gotta bring my uh, my my partner in crime here, our uh, our guest today. I gotta bring him with me. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. So we are uh, joined in studio, not for a practice run, but for right. a legitimate episode. And uh, and I'm super excited about this because we've been getting all this heat, TK. I know you're not really dialed into the interweb and the social media and all that stuff. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> that I'm in a antiquated so i will say this as a sort of a funny precursor to our introduction to our guest that it was a week ago that you messaged me literally about four days after we were texting you stuff and you're like did you need something and i'm like you just got that text <laughs> well on my in my defense sometimes uh, those texts and those messages get stuck in outer space and i don't know if it happens to you but every once in a while a week later i get a message from somebody i'm like wow I, i'll call them and well, I sent you that a week ago. I said, I'm sorry, it just popped onto my phone today. Yeah. Does that ever happen to you? No. <laughs> You're lying. No. I can't say that Kid, I've does ever. does that ever happen to you? You're, You're both lying. I can't say that I have ever had an instance where I got a message and then somebody said, oh, I sent that a day ago or really? i said that no i have had that it's, it's because it's shipping you know <laughs> yeah. shipping. Ship, ship that over to me will you well you got to ship it all the way to that satellite in outer space and it ships all the way down to your your phone and ups you know they their rocket ship is a lot slower than what we got with nasa so all right you're, you're not you're not funny anymore <laughs> <laughs> do we beat that one to death a little <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, in studio with us today, TK, I know you're excited. I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely. One of the most famous names in local entertainment, uh, former proud DJ at Rodeo Nightclub, former co-owner and co-host of the Rowdy Cowboy Show, and exclusive DJ for an entire year of the No Shoes Nation with Kenny Chesney, Kid George. Hey, Thanks George. Hey. Thank you for having me. Good to see you, pal. How's that for an intro? Oh, I was good. I'm good. I'm blushing. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm blushing right now. Uh, that's probably the camera. Yeah, that's, that's probably, probably the camera. It, we'll, also, it also adds like 10 pounds at least. We'll have to edit that out in post. <laughs> <laughs> 10 pounds at least. Yeah, yeah the what's cameras. Wrong these, Danny, what's wrong with these cameras? I've found that the cameras really don't lie. Yeah. And, you know, if you, if you look heavy or you look... God. Weird. You're I mean, looking I'm, weird or I'm heavy. pretty handsome. I, I don't know. Did, yeah, yeah, can you move this TV? I'm quit staring at myself. <laughs> I, I will agree with you. I think the camera probably is unflattering because, you know, I've been, and it's no secret. Don't, don't help me. Don't I've help been, me. like, training a lot, you know, at the gym pretty regularly and lost a bunch of weight. But on this shot, it looks like I've got a big belly and I actually don't. <laughs> well, I'm not going to lift up my shirt, but okay. <laughs> anyway, I so on to you. a lot like a mirror. <laughs> oh, Kyle? Kyle, you got something, Kyle? He's not going to lift up his shirt yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think we have to be thankful he's still wearing pants. I mean, we yeah. are five minutes into this episode. I did get yelled at for my shoes already because they're not boots. So, Boots and back straps. Yes. 
You want I, a gangbanger? I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I do have a nice pair of boots that I have acquired from a friend of mine. Uh, for the last, they don't I, have soles on them anymore. They, I, they do not. They do, I lost both of the heels on it from dancing, and uh, and apparently you can get those replaced. I don't know. I just haven't. I just, <laughs> I just switched to Crocs and uh, tennis shoes. So I was like, oh. dude, I thought you were six foot. And he was like, now nah, my heels fell off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What size are your feet? Uh, ten. Well, I've got about I don't know a dozen pair of boots that I don't wear anymore. Do they have heels on them? Oh, yeah. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. I'm in. <laughs> These right here would fit you. Those are pretty nice boots. Those are nice boots. Yeah. They're, you know who gave me these? Darren from the band High Noon. Oh, you're kidding me. The original yeah. High Noon. Yeah, we we're just, I don't know where we were. We we're doing, I said, those are really cool. And he says, yeah, I've had them forever. Do you want them? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I can remember wearing Just these so shows on this, this boot. I've had to super glue the hide down a couple of times, so they're well worn. And um, that's why he wants to give them to you because oh, they're, no. they're basically falling apart. <laughs> no, Everybody I gave give... Cowboy Pat some boots the other day, and how is Pat? <laughs> He's a knucklehead. Yeah, and we're gonna <laughs> encourage him to watch this episode. Oh, look at this! We got a close up of the boots. <laughs> Hair on boots, cowhide. Cowhide, you can see they're pretty worn, but they're so comfortable. Oh, yeah. So thank you, Darren, if you're watching the show. So, uh, KG, thanks for uh, carving out some time to sit with us. Uh, this is way better than our practice run. Yeah. Uh, because at our practice run, this, this sh- did not exist. We should start this, start this episode off correctly here. A little cheers. You may notice that mine's not quite the same color as theirs. That's because I did a little birthday celebration with my bride last night. And... Uh, that poison shall not touch my lips today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think KG and I got you covered. Yeah. Ah, no complaints. I heard there's beer and wine, and uh, I'm just going to kind of partake in all of them. That'll I boy. decided that I'm not driving at all today. so Well, you're I, sitting here for two hours. So oh, yeah. I get, you can get a few drinks in. Pinky's up. I'll be good. Yeah. So extra, like, heads up, Jill. <laughs> Keep an eye on that glass over there. I put uh, KG to work today already. It's so funny. (laughs) It's so stupid. I I was just about to say there has to be a story because you came in kind of shaking your head. Well, our garage door, you know, the room we're in is a studio, and it's my great room for my animals, but next door is an attached garage, and the garage door wouldn't open. Yeah. And I'm going through all the outlets and all the breakers, and... I just well the breaker the the outlet went dead and I'm like maybe a mouse got in there but yeah he pulled it down and it was clean and so I gave another outlet unscrew screw it in and as he was doing that I looked over at the wall where the breaker box is and I looked up and there's a switch up there it's up high a secondary switch for that circuit it's for that garage door open I said wait a minute I know the problem. I turned it on yesterday to get the yard light on for the crew that was here. Yeah. And I realized, oh, that's not the yard light switch. The the yard light switch is in the breaker box. Okay. That switch that I turned off is for, come on now. Producer Danny, (laughs) spike that Coke. That uh, garage switch that I turned off. Been a long night. You've earned that for sure. (laughs) (laughs) That I turned off was actually the garage door opener switch, the power switch. Now, did you give him the heads up while he was up there with his bare hands monkeying around before you flipped? He has no fear. He's told me a number of times his dad almost killed him when he was young. (laughs) Dad said, yeah, just pull that thing down. It was live. And, you know, he says, and he got the shock and. He told me yes, to just yeah, grab don't, it, so don't. I grabbed it from the outside where, where, the, where, where all the wires go into the bolts. And I just, <laughs> and he goes, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, you just told me to do that. <laughs> you don't walk away. He's from, like, you don't walk away from that one and say, well, we won't do that again. Yeah, <laughs> no. he, he's looking at you going, I wasn't supposed to live this long. Let her buck. <laughs> As you're crappy flopping on the floor. Sorry, son. <laughs> do we have insurance coverage for that? I guess we need to check with Lynn. And see what, what we can get down on Those that. Those kids are kind of irreplaceable. <laughs> <laughs> My brother-in-law electrocuted me last week. Uh, that was awesome. 
I was cleaning what? out. I was, I was, after uh, spraying a ceiling, yeah. uh, I had a little bit of dust inside of the uh, the light socket where the actual bulb goes in. Okay. So we shut off the power, and I was cleaning it up. And my brother-in-law just goes over and just flips that switch <laughs> while my finger's in there. So I was putting pressure into it. So my hand got stuck. I'm with like, a wet Aah! rag. Yeah. yeah, with a wet rag. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, what are you doing? So this is starting to sound It's so hard like, to uh, find good help, KG, uh, isn't it? <laughs> It was his idea and everything. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, real quick before we go into that, TK, uh, KG, quick sort of shameless plug. What are you doing now these uh, days? Because people are curious. Um, You're not playing music as much now. Uh, no, for the last uh, for the last almost year. Uh, I, I think I've had, what, two shows in the last year probably. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I run uh, T. George Interiors, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we got a crew of about four, uh, plus my uh, behind-the-scenes uh, uh, people. And, uh, yeah. And uh, things have been going well. So, uh, uh, you know, drywall, painting, you know, re retexturing ceilings, stuff like that. And you said you're out four to six weeks right now, right? I am. Yeah, that's great. That's busy. It is good. Yeah, it's very good. How were you uh, doing during the COVID crisis? Or did that knock your business? Because there's so many businesses I, I was that very excelled. Scared. Yeah. And so many businesses that I was very nervous killed. about that. And uh, so the first thing I did is I got involved in uh in home advisor and home advisor is where people can look online right, right. and then they i get i get the option to go bid on it i gotta pay for each lead but you know i'm like let me just give that a shot and honestly i turn it on for about two days a month and uh, uh the rest of it is all referral based uh for the last you know two years um it, it has just grown immensely uh, well that's good news because in this time of covid when everyone's just getting their butts kicked you mm -hmm. know it's good to hear some positive feedback and I do hear that occasionally, you know, people are doing well. The real, you know, before we talk about what you've been doing lately. Yeah, also, no, you go ahead. I wanted to say before we started talking. I'm going to have another drink. You go I, ahead. I think that when people maybe have first tuned in today, they might have thought they were watching the Three Stooges rather than a <laughs> Boots and Backstraps episode. We can't disappoint. People know what to expect with the three of us. Uh, so, uh, Shane, you know, talking about different businesses, mm -hmm. um, for those of you that don't know, uh, Shane Sponsors is uh, one of our only sponsors uh, for the show currently, and he has a real estate business. Yeah. And real estate is in in the craziest era I've ever seen. Yeah. Houses come on the market, and they're sold before they actually come onto the market. I get listings saying, well, this one's going to be on the market next week, and it never makes it to the market. Yeah. People... Uh, Houses are just going crazy, and uh, I'm looking for a, a piece of land and mm -hmm. maybe a different home. Yep. And I haven't gotten a new listing in two months. Yeah, it's pretty tough. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a great time to be a seller right now. Right, right. And, and uh, so Jill, our studio manager, is also my executive assistant with the real estate business. Right. So she stays very busy working with me, um, which is great. That we've, there, we've never, reconnected. We worked together years ago with Rowdy Cowboy Show. And that's yeah. how people know her, you know, from eight years ago or 10 years ago or whatever it was now. And and then uh, we got reconnected this last fall in this business, and she's been an absolute machine for me. So I appreciate that. Good job, Joe. Taking this business to the next level, which is what we have to do. She's our fire starter. Yeah, the, it, without getting long-winded about it, the, the market is going to shift at some point. We think, you know, based on our projections in 2022, we're going to start seeing some leveling off. People keep, have to. keep people keep using the word crash, and that's not what we're seeing. No. It's not going to be crash. It's It'll a correction. be a correction, right? Yeah. More of a balancing between the buyer seller because it is so seller dominant right now. It's ridiculous. The last handful of buyer offers that we've written for our clients have been well over asking price, no inspection, non refundable earnest money, flexible closing date, appraisal guarantee, right. like all this stuff to get the deal done. Even to the to the point where the last couple of deals that we got accepted had sort of like sappy letters from the buyer to the seller that were included in the offer to say, we really loved your house and a yeah. picture of the kids on the letter and all that. <laughs> stuff. I mean, you, we have to do what we have to do right now to, to be effective. And right. it's uh, it so the, be... it's a double edged sword right now, TK, because yeah. interest rates are great. Yep. Um, which is encouraging a lot of buyers to get out there and want to buy. But then as you mentioned a couple of times now in this conversation, the inventory is really low. You can't uh, sell high and buy low. No, you can't. <laughs> That's just the uh, catch-22 of the people that are selling their homes. Uh, maybe unless they're moving out of state somewhere where it's not quite Or if crazy. they have a different need. You know, they more, need more square footage. Or, right. You know, they're like the George family where they just pop kids out like kittens. 
<laughs> I found out where they're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good now. It's right. I'm never going to do that again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll hold my breath. How many have you got now, kid? I have uh, I have uh, six with my uh, with my stepdaughter as well. Holy moly. Christmas and is expensive. you've got five. We have four. Four and then a... Uh, Oh, you have four. four. I thought you yeah. had uh, three that are my full blood and then my stepson, which makes four. But, I, you know, people keep asking. They're like, are you guys going to have more? And I'm like, uh, it, yeah, maybe. We don't have a – we didn't come into this deal with a plan of, we, you know, we want the, the stereotypical. We want a boy and a girl and this name and that name and this many years apart. We just said, you know what, this is in God's hands. And if he wants to have us to have more kids, we will. And if he doesn't want us to have more kids, we won't. We're just going to leave it to him. And But we, nobody told either one of you guys. Here we go. Here's the George a, family. A little yep. problem in our world. That, this is the most – that must be a recent because you have Curtis in there. Uh, yep. That was uh, that was in the fall. Okay. That was in the fall. That's so a great picture. That's uh, uh, from the from left to right. Uh, that's my daughter, Riley, my daughter, Brianna, uh, my son, Curtis, on top of my shoulders, my wife, Crystal, my son, Leo, and my son, Travis Jr., Wow. In the sunflowers. Yep. Taken by the NAGO production. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> NGO. Yes. She's multifaceted. She does it all. That's a beautiful picture. It is a beautiful uh, what picture. What I was starting to say before the picture came up was that nobody, is, one, that is one sexy bitch. Oh, and Crystal <laughs> looks pretty good, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought we were going to keep this PG. <laughs> that is PG. <laughs> all right. There's no F bomb in there. There's a. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard, but there's a population problem in the world. Hmm. And uh, you might want to consider that next time you're rolling around with your wifeies. <laughs> I will tell you this, TK. If you look at the statistics, and KG, you're with me on this, that there are definite segments of the population that are way under replacement. You <laughs> know, people that are having couples that have a child and call it quits, that's under replacement. So that, you know, puts the onus on us as repopulate the I world. I ain't going for it. I used to hey, we, watched, we got you uh, taken I don't know if you know of. this, KG, KG you, you back me up here. You're not going to live forever, TK. I, did you know that? <laughs> I got <laughs> it. Is this news? Is this news flash? I don't <laughs> think, <laughs> I, don't think <laughs> I want to get the uh, viewers uh, a bad uh, idea that I don't like kids. I love, love, love kids. And not in a weird way. And not in a weird way, no. <laughs> I love kids. Unfortunately, my wife and I uh, don't have children. And uh, that's been a sad part of our wonderful, loving history. But uh, I'd be happy to drop off a couple just from time <laughs> to time, just from time to time. There yeah. you go. Well, don't be too hard on yourselves because anyone that knows you the way that we know you and Lynn, you have literally dedicated your lives to helping others. Oh, yeah. So God didn't leave you a lot of time in there to raise your own because you've been so busy helping others with the different things that they have going on in their lives. I know you've been immensely helpful to me and in, in my life and uh and so well, thank you well, yeah i appreciate no that. thank you you're uh, a young soldier good christian man i think the world of you and i think the world of this guy too uh i don't know if we need to get into the story but I, for 35 years i did the rowdy tomcat rowdy cowboy show and i wanted to retire you know i just never thought i'd be the age that i got to be and still doing that show it was fun when I was in my 20s and then my 30s and then my 40s. I'm like, whoa. I, at some point, I got to retire. And I tried a, a couple of replacements, so I had about three or four replacements. Yeah. And they didn't work out. And uh, why do you, before you, you move ahead of that, why do you think that you had less success with the previous attempts? Um, I don't we know. talked about I, this. I a had bit. a formula that worked. Uh, I just, it seems to me that. And I've heard this from other people. You gi they would say to me, you give people permission to cut loose, let their hair down, and have fun. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of a neat way of putting it. And I guess that was true because mm -hmm. they certainly did. And we played such fun country music and a little bit of fun old rock and roll. And yeah. I mean, we'd play polkas. We'd St. Patrick's Day, we're playing Irish, you know, folk songs. Celtic stuff. And just, you know... Fun stuff. Fun stuff. I always referred it to, because uh, I'm Polish, I referred my show, uh, or I correlated my show as liking to a Polish wedding reception. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's just fun, and uh, everyone has fun at a wedding reception, and that was kind of what we did. And 
So I finally found these jokers to replace me. <laughs> Actually, Shane first. And then there was a night. Well, I'm older, so that makes sense. And yeah. quite frankly, <laughs> I didn't know anything <laughs> no. about either one of you. I was just was impressed with your demeanor, uh, your personality, and you always wear the country outfits the way they wear them out west. A little bit of the hair coming down under your cowboy hat. I mean, that was back things. when I had that much hair. Oh, and the earrings. Oh man, <laughs> can we can we pull off a picture of that? Uh, <laughs> let's not say we didn't. <laughs> well, we're going to. And then, uh, unbeknownst to me, a uh, kid introduced himself to me once, and uh, uh, I. I said, I need you to work because I'm not feeling good today. So those two work together. The one time. So the, the, yeah, the one time that he, he calls in sick. I just got a random call in the middle of the oh afternoon. Boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> those aren't shorts, everybody. <laughs> those are his underwear. <laughs> I don't like wearing pants. It's not my thing. Yeah, no. Try and wrap your head around that <laughs> statement. <laughs> <laughs> and then I found out where kids are coming from. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I got a I got a call from Tomcat in the in the middle of the afternoon. He said he said, "Hey, this is Tomcat. Um, I don't know if you know me." I'm like, "Yeah, I know who you are." And uh, and he goes, "I got your phone number, and uh, I'm sick. I'm sick. I've never called in sick before. Um, I got a guy that uh, I, I got a kid. he kept calling you a kid. He goes, I got this kid. I've been working with Shane, and uh, he kind of knows my format." Can you come in and DJ with him uh, this uh, t tonight? It was a Monday. Did I get your phone number from your uh, girlfriend, your wife? Um, I actually, I, I, you, I met you through through my ex wife, uh, Amanda, and uh, right. and then and then I came up to you. I said, hey, um, I you know I don't know if you're ever in need of another DJ, but Rodeo Nightclub had just closed at the time, right? And uh, so I was looking for another gig, so I left you my phone number. Oh, good. Yeah. That's I'm glad that worked out because, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, these guys took my show, which was uh, look at that. Do you believe that? Look at how skinny he is. <laughs> what, year, what year was this photo taken? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Oh five. I don't know. You are right. That camera today really puts the weight on. <laughs> ah wow! Wow! Are we right, bring get it on. Shots or <laughs> I know. I know. This is the afternoon of zingers. I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, Kid George and uh, Shane, uh, they took my show, and I was so impressed. I was so happy that they continued it, and they did it differently than I did, which was really a good thing because, you know, I did the same stick about, I don't know, 35 years. You know? Yeah, yeah. And but the nice, the nice part about your stick, because I, I, I witnessed it from a, from a patron and from standing in the booth next to you, uh, whether people have heard it a million times or not, I know. They, ex they expect it. They expect they it, and they, and they love it. It's just like Rodney Dangerfield. Mm -hmm. He tells the same story. Oh, my wife. Let me mm -hmm. tell you about my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn and I went and saw Rodney uh, in Las Vegas, and they put us right in front of the stage. The two seats in the middle, right in front of them. Rodney brought Lynn up on stage and uh, did a little deal with her, and it was pretty funny. But getting back to what you're talking about, I – would not, I would hate to go to a Rodney Dangerfield show and not hear those jokes that he's been saying for years yep. and years and years. And uh, if you're right. Everyone just wants to hear it. You I don't try go, to change it. You up don't go to ACDC and not expect Thunderstruck or something right. like that. Yeah. Like if, if they didn't, you'd be like, what, what is happening here? Yeah, yeah. you're going to burn the, burn the stadium to the yeah. ground. Yeah, so it's interesting, TK, because when, when KG and I worked together that night, you and I had already been working together for a few months in the show format where you're, you know, basically the guy on mic and doing everything. And I'm just basically pressing play and taking mental notes on how your show operates so that I can continue that. Right. And when KG came in and worked that first night with me, we went way off script. We still did a few of the things that you would expect with your show. We did some the, of the we dances. Did your staples. And, we yeah. did your, we did your staples, yeah. the classics, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got to play the hits. Mm -hmm. So we did that, but we knew right away, okay, we're onto something. So he and I spoke and said, Hey, do you want to do this? You know, I think we've got something here. And he agreed. And, and then we had a conversation and, and just basically said, maybe the reason why it wasn't working for you to retire before with whoever you had, because you had certainly some, some talented DJs right. that were before and tried to do it is because they were trying to really mimic you. They're trying to step into your boots and be Tomcat, and you can't do that. No. No one can be you. You are you. And so KG well, and I said, we've got something where we can pay, you know, homage, like he said, playing the hits, but have this very different concept 
that we, yeah. you know, can do together instead of it just being one of us. Yeah, you know, and I did the show for 35 years, and how many years did you guys? 10 years? 10, yeah. 10 years after, I mean, you prolonged the show. <laughs> Look at this guy. And so I was thrilled with that. I mean, that, you know, actually. That's that quite the shirt there, KG. A couple people that could prolong that show New Year's and Eve. <laughs> do it in their own way. But then, unfortunately, bro country happened. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, we can have that discussion all day. We could call it unfortunately, but I think that bro country brought a new genre or, of people right. into the in, into country. I won't I, I won't argue with yeah. you about that. And yeah. and and with that, um, I it it helped it helped us continue what we're doing because right. um, country has not always had a uh, it wasn't always super popular. Yeah, it was, and especially we're, we're in the middle of the Twin Cities. Yeah, like people will enjoy country, but you know it, it's it's not what is it like if you go if you go down south or or, or uh into more rural areas am i saying that right uh yeah uh, where uh I mean, that, that's what you listen to that's that's what you, well, what's considering expected. you're wearing your hat backwards i guess if they took one look at us they'd know which side of that fence you're on oh absolutely i didn't <laughs> I, I didn't i didn't grow up with boots I, I the first time i wore boots was at rodeo nightclub was a couple of weeks in and uh uh, how I how I even got started into uh, into DJing, uh, I had helped my uncle with some uh, with some weddings when I was like, yeah, let's go oh, back you, to that because sure. we can we can fast forward it, a little it, bit. It'll so how'd, it'll how'd jump you, right into boots. I like how'd that. you get in the music. Uh, <laughs> so uh, my uncle uh, had uh, had been a DJ since you know since I was born. And stop are, that. Are those boots? <laughs> those are, are those not. Boots? Those are not boots. Just checking. Okay. Okay. Yeah, boots have never. Really what are you doing thing. on the floor? Uh, what are those? Uh, are I'm those celebrating lugs? my I'm celebrating my birthday on like a Doc we- Martens or lugs on a or Wednesday night. <laughs> this is having too much fun. Uh, <laughs> that's like his fifteenth shot in. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, but I got started uh, when I was around fourteen, just carrying back carrying the crates of CDs, uh, the crates and crates and crates of CDs, yeah. uh, in and out of uh, weddings and uh, cutting your teeth. Oh yeah, and. Honestly, just standing there for four hours, and I, I didn't, I didn't get it. Um, and then, uh, eventually, when I turned eighteen, um, my uncle approached me and said, "Hey, you know who you're an idiot." And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah, okay, go ahead. And he goes, "Do you think you'd be an idiot like on the microphone, like uh, be, you know, be louder in front of people?" I go, I go, yeah, we can sure try it. So he brought me in a rodeo nightclub where he was DJing. It was him and Gentleman Jim. And uh, gentleman Jim. Yep. Do you remember Jim? Remember him? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I, I still see him on a regular basis. Do you? Uh, I do. And uh, um, we. Uh, and so I went in there, and man, I could not figure out my microphone voice to save my life. I could not figure Hello, it out. Hello, boys and girls. Oh, it was so <laughs> high. Uh, it, they, they would just give me like just different things to say. Uh, you know, do a drink special. You know, oh, two dollar course lights. You know, I, I just <laughs> couldn't figure it out. And my uncle and. Here's See how well, people are watching this and they're like, wait a minute, there were two dollar Coors lights. That's a lie. That never happened. <laughs> oh yeah, no, this is this is back in like 2002. So, <laughs> um, no, I was uh, I, I would be I would be in the middle of a of an announcement and he'd be punching me in the stomach like while I'm doing it just to get me to flex and, and figure it out and I project I, I couldn't I didn't understand what he was talking about and then eventually it occurred to me and this is the best way that I have taught people how to talk on the microphone is you know when you're in the car. And you're, you get your music cranked up, and you're and you got somebody in there with you, and you go to talk to them. You're not yelling at them, but you are projecting. Yeah. You're you're talking louder. That's how you talk on a microphone. Mm-hmm. Yep. Don't talk to the mic. Talk through the mic. Yeah, absolutely. And but I could I couldn't figure that out. So, uh, so yeah, that that went on for a long time of him just punching me in the stomach while I'm talking, trying to. So my my announcement sounded ridiculous. <laughs> <It's>, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, so that's that's how I got started in the industry. Yeah, and then slowly, uh, and, the, and I was an MC. So you're working at rodeo. Yep, at, just as an MC. And there's a lot of country there, obviously. Oh, absolutely, and I worked Friday nights, which was a very big night there. So, say, kid, yeah, explain what an MC is. And uh, the MC, I mean, uh, the, mas- the, the acronym is Master mas- of Ceremonies. Yep, Master of Ceremonies. Uh, what's s- the difference between an MC? And, and a, a disc DJ. jockey. Yeah. Well, so we would work as a as a as a two man two man crew. So I would uh, so it would be uh, Dirty Doug, and then at the time Doug Suter. Nope, Doug, oh. George. Oh, Doug George. Doug George. Yep. Okay. Uh, and uh, and I and I couldn't uh, and I didn't actually have a DJ name at the time. And uh, I'll I'll go back to uh, at the at the time we were with K one hundred two and Travis Moon was 
yeah. what was was the man. He was well. Thank you very much. <laughs> Triple fisting I, like a champ. It's gonna. Where's my wine? <laughs> yeah. All right. Toast time. Toast time. Toast. It's toast. <laughs> Cooked bread. Toast. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, where was I? I was dead air. That was awesome. That was delicious. You didn't have a name yet. You didn't oh, have a my name. Na- I did. Yeah, that's right. I didn't have a name. And uh, um, Travis Moon was there, so they would refer to Travis as Travis, and then they would refer to me as Little Travis. And I'm like, I don't. That's I'm, not gonna. Work. I'm like, I don't want to be Little Travis over the microphone. This sounds <laughs> awful. I'm already. I was already the young kid. I I, I just was. I was the kid there, because everybody else was in their, you know, uh, you know, late 30s, early 40s, and I was 18 years old, and so. Um, and it was right. I think it was right around the time that Kid Rock was popular, and pe- and so people were coming up with some different names because they're about to do some advertising and put put it on signs and stuff like that. And they kind of came up with the name for me. I didn't come up with it myself, uh, but they just went with uh, you know Kid George or DJ Kid George. And I'm like, all right, I, and it made sense because I was the kid. And uh, and well, then Gino, the new guy. Yeah, <laughs> I I'm and and now I'm. Uh, I am Twenty a, years later, yeah, I'm I'm 38 now, and I'm still Kid, kid George. There was so. a point in time where you were referred to as Cowboy George. N- no, I wasn't. Was Boy George. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. No, I wasn't Tom. I know that you thought I was. <laughs> I mean, it was country music. And here's that Boy George in the house tonight. Here's where he is. Cow- I was Cowboy George. I was like, it's <laughs> Culture Club. Is here tonight. <laughs> Every time Tom showed up, he'd be like, he'd call me uh, Cowboy George or King George or something like that. And I look over, I'm like, does he not remember? And he goes, he goes, I don't know if he can't remember if he's messing with you. I, uh, I'm like, all right. Well. <laughs> I think it was a little bit of both. <laughs> I would agree. I, I can remember one time asking him, like, okay, are you just messing with him? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, and I apologize. No, it's all right. You don't have to apologize. It was great shtick, you know. Yeah. It was. People thought it was hilarious because yeah. because everybody in the room would be like, "Okay, is he being funny or is he forgetting?" You know. <laughs> well, to forget is rude, and I wasn't trying to be rude. <laughs> oh, wait, I, I guess I was trying to be. Tom, funny. we were. Uh, we would go right back at you. You like you'd come in and you'd hang out. And uh, you sit next to Steve, who we refer to as Sleepy <laughs> Steve. Sleepy Steve. We'd always that say he's. Well, are you sleeping up there? And then so then we'd uh, then we'd make old guy jokes at you guys sitting up there all the time. So when you got on the mic, you were zinging them back at us. Oh, so yeah. so it was all good. Look fun. at those guys up there watching reruns of Murder She Wrote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen this one four times. <laughs> Maybe Steve had, but I guarantee you I had. Uh, Sleepy Steve, that Sleepy was a Steve. great one. Uh, yeah, I, loved, I remember he, the first time I heard that. You could always hear him without a microphone in the corner up there, like "I'm you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, speaking of Big Steve, as long as we're just uh, He's a great dude. here, uh, for those of you that don't know, they we're talking about the Hogs Breath nightclub in St. Paul, mm-hmm. Little Canada. And uh, Tommy Dre, my 44 year old friend. He's way older than that. I know. But <laughs> You've I've been known friends him for 44 with him. Yeah. years. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Wait a I minute. think he's older yeah. than 44. Oh, I've known Tommy for 44 years. Uh, he had a partner and uh, had a, there he is. Let's see. Big Steve is the guy on the far left. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got Shane and we got Rascally Rick, myself. And why don't you guys take it from there? Chris I, Knight to your right. Or I guess that would be your yeah, left, yeah. our right. And then that. Tommy DeRay. Well, KG's in the back. There. KG. And then t- is that his name? What was his nickname? Chris, what, what what did Chris go by? He had a what oh. was his DJ handle? Shooter. shooter, shooter, yeah, that's right. And Tommy Dre's on the far right. He's the owner of the Hogs Breath, yeah. and Steve. He's got the throwback hat on. Oh, I no, love he that. He never dressed like that. No, he used to dress like that quite a bit. Actually, that hat he's wearing is mine. Oh, because his hat he hadn't worn in years, and it was all dilapidated. It shrunk. It didn't fit him anymore. So I. That's one of my hats. Tom, you're giving you're giving your hats out, you're giving your boots out. I know. That's all right. I, when you have an excess. But Steve, can, can we know. go back to that photo for one second, guys? So it's funny to me, Tom, that this is like the like the Rowdy Cowboy show reunion, right? Yeah. In honor of you that night. And we're all in our cowboy gear. And look at Rick. He's wearing like a yeah. hip hop sports jersey or something well, shooter's <laughs> not wearing any country attire yeah he's got a that's, a, that's afflicted George. he's got an afflicted shirt on which is supposed to be like the bro oh. country version of country right 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 yeah 
But kid, what have you got on? I got a flannel. Jack, a Jack Daniels flannel. That's close enough. And a Roddy Cowboy show hat. There you go. Yeah, he's there. He didn't well, recognize you with the glasses. Different. What's that? As we know, Rick's a little different. Yeah. He's from, uh, uh, what's the town up there? <laughs> On your way to Hibbing? Uh, Virginia. 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 Iron Range. Boy, my, my memory is horrible. But anyway, getting back to Big Steve, you know, he had a liver issue, and he finally, <laughs> after years of waiting, uh, he had a kidney transplant. I said liver, but I think I meant kidneys. And he had to take uh, dialysis. Like uh, liver would make more sense, given what we did for yes. a living. So. <laughs> but he uh, finally had his operation, and uh, he was on a waiting list for probably 10 years. And how's they finally it, how's got he doing? It. He's right doing great. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Is I mean, he back to normal color? He was knocking on he was uh, getting, death's door for 10 years. Yeah, he was getting green for a minute there. And uh, he was. Poor he guy. He was getting jaundice, and... Uh, they finally had one. Uh, somebody had passed. And, you know, when you get to uh, his age, you know, they like to give those things to the younger people. Yeah. Because you're on your way out the door anyway. And Yeah. Anyway, he got one, and there was some complications. And he's well, not doing the dialysis anymore, and living a good life. Good. Good for him. And still watching old reruns of Roy Rogers. <laughs> yeah. We do love Steve. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No question about it. So, KG. Yes. You're at Rodeo. You finally get a name. Yeah. And then what happens? I mean, I, it, clearly at some point there was a passing of the torch because you're running the show there, and Doug and, and Gentleman Jim are not, right? Uh, well, the, uh, they were they were doing other things, uh, but uh, around— <laughs> In the back room. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, as soon as— uh, I, got, I got the opportunity to, to DJ a couple times, uh, just filling in, and um, it was— I, I was the same age as a lot of the clientele, yeah. So I was a little bit more on the ball with some of those things. And they, like a lot of, you're actually friends with a lot of them, right? I I, I I turned out to be yes. Yeah, versus them where there's a huge disconnect in the generation. Yep, and uh, so slowly I uh, uh I like I, I just kind of moved into that role, and yeah. then I started DJing. Basically every night they were open, whatever hours they would give me. Sure, I'll be there. I I DJed uh you know Wednesday nights, which was a uh a very nice uh. Oh, that a boy, Tom. Uh, <laughs> Spiked his soda. I like it. I'm proud of you. I forgot there's cameras in here. <laughs> um, uh, Wednesday nights, which was uh, more of an old school uh, country night, which was a lot of swing, a lot of swing dancing, two stepping. Yeah. Uh, you know things like that. Sure. West Coast swing, and uh, a little bit of line dance, and and uh, people, you know, it was it was a very specific crowd at that night. Uh, Thursday night was there. Uh, was their 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 dance night, their hip hop night? Okay. Uh, I would also DJ that one because uh, I knew the genre. And then Friday was a because you grew up like yeah in I, a I, suburb I, of I, Minneapolis, I, right? I grew up, you know. I mean, the things that I liked uh, growing up, like if it was something that like me and my mom would dance in the living room all the time, and uh, she really liked uh, Janet Jackson okay. and uh, a CNC Music Factory, wow, uh, stuff like that. And so we would uh, we we dance in the living room and, and crank up the tunes. We ended up getting a nice sound system and. Uh, and uh, and we had a really nice sound system and really bad windows, so every window in the house was just <laughs> shattering. Uh, but uh, it was uh, it was a very cool deal. Uh, I, I still have those speakers. Uh, there's some uh, nice big Sirwin Vegas. I haven't hooked them up in years, but I just can't stand to get rid of them because they were so nice. Yeah, for those that don't know Mama P, she is one of the coolest moms ever. She is to me. She's like the mom that I of all the moms I know um, of my friends. She's the like one that's the most on the level with our generation or even the younger generation she yeah. just refuses to grow up and i love that about her. well I, I i i couldn't get away with anything she knew everything about me yeah. at all times and i don't know how i don't know how it worked but uh yeah it, it kept me kept me on the straight and narrow though yeah yeah for sure yeah moms know everything they do they do they do so you're doing all these different nights yep you get really comfortable with the country crowd obviously mm -hmm. you get your country music repertoire in the brain is growing. Yeah, especially from the Wednesday from Wednesday night, uh, just yeah. doing the the old school, which was uh, primarily uh, some seventies, but mostly eighties and nineties country. And uh, what was really nice is I had people like like Lynn Card, yeah. um, uh, you know, coming up and basically almost giving me a list. Lynn Card, shout out! Oh, yes. there's mom. There's the familia. Yeah. There's you and all your siblings. Why don't you just run us around the board there? All yeah. right. From left to right, uh, that's my sister, Tiffany. Who just had a birthday. Uh, yep, yep. And She's 50. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> uh, then my uh, my younger brother, Skyler, uh, 
that's my stepdad Kurt and my mom Penny and then myself and uh, Danny G. Danny Geo Productions. Yeah. What's the deal that with that like sweatshirt, Danny family. G? Woo. Oh. <laughs> Ugly sweater it was, contest. It, it, it was Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure it was. She's festive. Let this, it go. this was taken yesterday, actually. It's the tie dye. That's what throws it off. It's too close. <laughs> <laughs> me and the whole family. Me and my. We had uh, tie dye uh, uh, shirts for Christmas, so we. Me and my whole family had the tie dye on. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. But uh, what were we talking about? Yeah. So you're <laughs> you, you, you're you're taking over, getting comfortable with the country crowd. You're getting yeah. really comfortable with the, with the country music scene, especially you said Wednesday nights because Lynn Carr oh, and those yeah. guys. Well, and yeah, they would they would give me lists of like play this song, this song, this song, this song, this song. And like they, would just, they weren't afraid to come up and tell me just like a, a playlist. Essentially, I'm like in the beginning when I didn't know. Here's what uh, we want to dance. Yeah, to. I'm like, I'm like, all right, sounds good. And so I started going through, and I was learning, you know, you know, which song was a swing dance, what was a two step, what, and like it just, and then and then feeling it out, and then learning how to dance myself. So then I could, I I, I could figure out what songs went to what, and with that, it really helped for me to, you know. Uh, maneuver the dance floor uh just you know from the dj booth you know like you throw in a two-step and then after that don't throw another two-step in you know throw in a swing dance for half throw, a dozen throw, songs throw, yeah, yeah yeah throw in a slow you know, slow dance stuff like that to, yeah. to basically you know be able to move around and not just become one-dimensional which i think uh really helped you a lot when we were working together in the modern iteration of rowdy cowboy show because he would know whether it was you know, hillbilly shoes or it was um, uh, something nitty gritty dirt band or like whatever the song was, he knew which songs were connected to what dances that they right. were doing in, in that time. And so he would never do two songs or three songs of the same dance, right. which is invaluable to the popularity that we attain so quickly because people would, if he got sick and there's another DJ, like we won't name any names, but somebody that would have to step in and fill in for him. And they were less familiar with that connection between the dances and the songs. And they would do a back-to-back. You should see the daggers that we would get from people on the dance floor. Like, we just did this dance. Like, they were vocal about it. <laughs> I never had to have those problems. Oh, When I was coming up through it, we didn't have anybody. Uh, the only organized dance we ever did was the Cotton Eye Joe. What about swinging? Well, they had something we created. <laughs> well, and there, that whole Hank trio thing, yep. right? Yep. Right. Um, yeah, and that uh, that evolved. Yep. But as far as a, a country style dancing, whether it be a waltz or a two step or whatever it was, we had such a small dance floor. We didn't really concern ourselves. Hog's breath is a postage the, stamp. The yeah. uh, clientele was college clientele. I don't know how it. I kind of do really know how it happened. Oh, it started I, I absolutely many years it. ago. The hockey players from the University of Minnesota started filing in. Yep. And then their following started filing. And then other colleges, you could go to the Hogsmeade on a Monday night and you'd see school buses stacked in the two different parking lots with college kids from Bemidji, from Stout, from Mankato, and other colleges. Well, that's they, when the drinking age was 18, right? Exactly. Yeah. And... Well, they didn't know how to do any of those dances. None of those kids, I would say 90% of those kids, didn't even know anything about country music. They just wanted to go to this party that they heard about. Yeah. And they go there, and I, and I think because of that, and I'm kind of shifting now. No, you're good. We introduced hundreds and hundreds of young people to country music. Yes. Just because of our atmosphere and the fun we had. Nobody knew how to line dance there. Mm -hmm. They were just packed onto that dance floor and just... Dancing, uh, free like free flow dancing, if you will, which and I do miss. I, I do, yeah. miss, I do miss that a lot. I, I, and I, I took what I, what I knew from rodeo because rodeo nightclub, the dance floor was an old, an old uh, uh, roller rink. Yeah. Right. So it was a massive dance oh. floor, which was really fun for some of the some of the line dances. Watching this huge group of people move back and forth, and and when people said, "How do I learn how to do this?" They would actually uh, open the doors at eight o'clock, and at right. eight, and at eight fifteen, they would have line dance lessons for about a half hour or so, and then the party kicks off at nine. Yep. And uh, so, so that's how the the popularity can continue to grow and grow and grow of the line dancing. And yeah, and in and the early days, we did know. that at the Hogsworth too. Yep. We had and some professional line dancers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, when I first got into the <laughs> DJ business back in the really early nineties, 
and you had that like you mentioned tk this like popularity of country as it as it changed at that time where it went from all the guys that were big in the 60s and 70s and even into the 80s and then also you have this like new brood of country that had a little bit more edgy feel to it a little more rock feel to it more electric guitar right. stuff like that you know your tim mcgraws and your kenny chasneys and your blake shelton's and like garth brooks got really big in the 90s so oh, country we- was evolving yeah. And you had all these people that were used to the you know, the old school country, you know, the George Straits and the George Jones and well, the Conway Twitties. All and, the 80s was Alabama and, yeah. you know, th- those types of... Uh, the harmonies. So and, there was like yeah. this like big shift in country music and Little you had the, and, all the folks that were f- fans of country music at that time were like, what is all this new country? And I think a lot of that's going on now, right? Oh, absolutely. Get the people that maybe came up in the 90s country and early 2000s country and now you got Florida Georgia Line and Thomas Rhett and like these very different country artists mm-hmm. and all the folks that were, you know, your generation, my generation, et cetera, are like, what in the world is this? You know, yeah, a lot, of, a lot more of the country artists are dressed more similar to the way I am right now, yeah. opposed to the hats and the boots. Right. And, right. uh, it, but you know, the, the sounds that come out of them, even the, the guys the that were wearing hats and stuff like Gary Allen and, yep. you know, they stopped wearing them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he yep. did. And, uh, who's the, I'm sorry, forgive me. Uh, uh the big, who's the, Who's the heavy set guy? Wears his hat backwards. He's got. He's like the biggest guy in country right now. Luke Combs. Luke Combs. He's a perfect example. Yeah. You are a perfect example of Brantley Gilbert. What, what people are wearing these days is just hats on backwards and all the tattoos on their body. The kids, the tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> um. And 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 with that, so the conversation about bro country. You know, right away when uh, when that topic came up and everybody was fighting against it and stuff like that. Uh, for me, I, I embraced it a little bit more because I didn't have just a strictly country background. Right. And I thought that was, like I said, such a good stepping stone or, um, you know, a, a way to, for people who was, weren't into, um, weren't in a country to maybe identify with it a little bit more. Right. Right. And, and, and that's, I mean, that's what all, that's all music is, is what you identify with. Yeah. You know, I, I'll tell you my feelings on it. Um, do tell. Yeah, I, I think I've got a, a. All right, you've got all your. What was that picture of? <laughs> I think that was my retirement party. That, that was your retirement party. <laughs> yeah, brothers got a hug. Brothers do got a hug. I think I might have been crying in that well, moment too. I, I was. One of the twi- two well, times I've so cried in my life. <laughs> you know. I think both of them are over you, actually. Remind <laughs> me to uh, come back to your retirement party, Shane. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Um, you know, you have all the different genres of music, whether it's gospel or whether it's jazz, uh, country music, rock and roll, hip hop, uh, soul, you know, um, disco, whatever they are. I've never seen a genre of music attach itself, and I could be wrong, but it attach itself to a different genre of music, such as hip hop. You got country music, which typically and his historically is this far. I mean, way far away from hip hop. Well, all of a sudden, they're at- they're adopting a hip hop, and I'm like, well, I've well, never seen they ad- they, ad- they attach itself to rock, but they attach itself to rock, and then and and uh, and so that's th- true. That was a that was that was its first step towards moving its way towards some of the. It was like rock, and then yeah. pop, and then what do they call it? Hi- uh, Hip hop, uh, hip hop, yeah, uh, which I, which I'm not I'm not a huge fan of. I see that I see that it has its place. Uh, I mean, if you go if you ever go to a a mud run where they, they get the big trucks going yep, through yep, the yep. big pits, and uh, the music that you hear just bumping through there is uh, songs like uh, or like artists like the Lax uh, or I was just gonna say the Lax. The, oh, the Lax, Colt Ford, Colt Ford uh, right. which is a uh, which Colt. I mean, I mean, Colt Ford did. Uh, did Colt s- Ford is the one that changed the whole genre. He's the one you, that brought bro country and he into raps. existence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like rap. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, and I mean, what what about the uh, uh, the song he did with uh, John Anderson, the swing? Right. Uh, I thought the the way he redid that with John Anderson was amazing. I love that because I'm I, sorry, I, 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 I haven't heard that. You they haven't? Did, they remixed swinging. Yes, they did. Yeah. Oh my god! And, and they did That's it together. Awesome. And they did it together. And so they they took some of the old with some of the new, and uh, and it, it was really great. Unbelievable. Yeah. Colt Ford. Do you know what he used to do for a living? I do. Or you do. Do you know? I don't. Colt Ford was a professional golfer. What? <laughs> Doesn't he look yeah. like have the image of a professional golfer? It's more like John Daly. 
he looks like a cross between <laughs> John Daly and Hank Williams Jr. Yeah, he does. <laughs> and about five foot six, maybe. Yeah. I have always loved John Daly as a golfer because Me too. he was that like, I'll do whatever I want. I don't care what the rules are. He's on national television walking down the yeah. fairway having a heater. <laughs> yeah. Suba pants on. Yeah, he's like, I don't care. <laughs> Uh, I know. But when you can hit the ball 340 <laughs> yards or whatever. Have you seen uh, – and maybe you have like I have you, crush a drive. Have you seen his son? No. He's Oh, he, yeah. He looks just like him, swings just like him. That yep. incredibly powerful wrap-around-your-body swing. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dislocate super, your spine. He's a mini-me. Oh, oh, yeah. And it's unbelievable. Just, it's funnier than heck. Just crushes. Yeah. Cracks me up. And a good, and a good golfer, too. They do the father-son thing, and uh, and I think they won – I think they won the last one uh, oh, that yeah. they were together, but it was it, it was. It's he's been doing the father son ever since he was about that. Oh yeah, big and you know now he's probably only about that big. But <laughs> you know what's sad is you play golf, you obviously play golf. I play a little golf, and we have, we have never played together. Well, well you're, it. you it. We have to it. force you to play, but yeah. I used to play a lot. TK, I was an eight at one point. I was playing with my brother in law and playing probably 30 or 40 rounds a year and I was getting pretty good. And then you had an eight handicap. Yeah. That's and then, pretty good. And then it fell off the wagon and I actually played around with you and Jesse last year. And that might've been the first round in probably five or six years. Who and it didn't we go well. For a foursome? We should, who should we invite? Oh, we got to bring Jesse in. Jesse, our insurance guy. He's yeah. good. Oh, okay. Jesse Shepard. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah. He's watching this podcast. If he knows what's good for him, <laughs> <laughs> your retirement. For those of you that don't know, my good friend Shane is a cancer survivor. Yeah, thank you. And wherever you're sitting, that deserves a round of applause. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, boy, that, you know. Had to give up a we ball really, to do it, but. <laughs> I wasn't going to go there. Yeah, I, I'm not, a, I'm not uh, ashamed of it. No. Hey, can I tell I you a funny story about that? What's that? <laughs> can I tell you a funny story about that? Absolutely. So my first show back doing RCS with this guy, Rowdy Cowboy Show RCS, um, yeah, it was nice. like halfway through the night i'm like look i keep looking over at him and he's got this weird look on his face and i'm just like why does he have this weird look on his face so anyway so like halfway through the night i dropped the first ball joke because i you know had testicular cancer i had to give up a testicle to, to beat it the first time and then chemo the second time but anyway so i drop a ball joke because you, you got to do that right yeah you got to make everyone feel comfortable yeah so then you can just see this like sign of relief on his face and he gets on mic and he's like, man, I'm so glad you did that. Cause I wasn't sure if it was going to be weird. Or I had a hundred <laughs> of them ready to go there in the holster. And I just, I wasn't sure how he was feeling because when we're talking amongst us, he makes the jokes all the time, but publicly I didn't know where he was at with it. Once he did it. Oh, the floodgates. The floodgates open. Open. Oh, I'm oh, sure. It was a night of ball jokes. Oh, it was hilarious. Oh. It was, I was, it, would, it was almost a year. And isn't it great that <laughs> even I was do that. You know, you got to love it. People are so thin-skinned now. I mean, everything's offensive. Yeah. Everything. I'm Polish, and I never once in my life got offended by a Polak joke. You can't. Never once. Yeah. As can't. a matter of fact, a quick story, I was at a – there was a guy, a football player for the Minnesota Vikings, Sammy White. Do you any of you remember Oh, yeah, of him? course, yeah. He was a wide receiver, and he and I were at a party, and he's telling me Polak jokes, and I'm telling him black jokes, and we were having the time of our life. Nothing uh, hateful or anything no. like that. Right. But he's cracking them, and I'm cracking them. We're having a ball, and I unload a punchline on him, and a gal overheard that, and she raced over. She called me a bigot. She called me this, and I'm like, nah, I'm not. And never mind. And Sammy White was like, get away. We're just having fun here. Yeah. That's when people weren't so thin skinned. Yeah. You know, and you it's a, get it's away a sad those. deal that we're in right now that we you know, that people are so thin skinned that you just, it's like you have to walk around in eggshells all the time for fear that you might say the wrong thing and offend somebody. And that's a ridiculous way to live. It's ruining people's uh, careers right now. It is 100%. Oh, the absolutely. cancel culture, right? At the, oh, yeah. at the hog's breath. I, we I, couldn't uh, do our show anymore. I did a disclaimer. I know he couldn't for sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did a, I did a disclaimer. If you get easily offended, you maybe want to go next door. You maybe want to go home because yeah. we, Pick on everybody. We have fun. I everybody told, gets it equally. I told Mexican yeah. jokes. I told black jokes. And Trigger might have got a gay joke or two. Oh, gay jokes. I mean, and it was all in fun. And everyone laughed. I mean, Pick I on crackers, a, too. And we're not, we're not you know, free from the assault. I told a black joke. We had a bunch of black guys sitting at the bar. And they fell off of their stools laughing. And they, I couldn't buy a drink for the rest of the night. They kept sending drinks up. They were like, 
that was the funniest black joke ever. And then there was a group of Mexicans to my right, and I told them a Mexican joke, and they were just laughing, and I loved that time. Yeah. I loved that time, and I just hate. I'm just waiting for a band of Scandinavians from uh, northern Minnesota to come down and picket the new uh, Viking Stadium for the name the Vikings. Right. You know, I mean, come on. You've never seen that, and you're never going to see that. No. I mean, uh, the names yeah. are typically proud names. And uh, Well, we're going we're gonna to try not to dance on the line anymore. Yeah. Here. And uh, <laughs> we do, however, have to take a, a short break. Now, um, just for the, the listening and viewing audience, we are keeping KG in studio for the whole episode today. I feel like we've got a lot more we want to cover with you, bro. And a refill, yeah. And a refill for yeah. sure. So Refill both, all three? Yeah, let's <laughs> oh, go. Oh, not yet. <laughs> I don't want to so, give people the wrong impression. <laughs> we're giving them the right impression, and we're working on that sponsorship. Yeah. So speaking of sponsors, a little segue there. Folks, stick around right after the break. More from Kid George. Boots and Backstraps is proudly brought to you by Homes by Shane. Making your move with the Homes by Shane team means an unparalleled customer service experience. That level of service is the foundation of this REMAX Results referral-based business. Our driven team of experts communicate with their clients every step of the way, ensuring a memorable experience from the first conversation through your closing day. Go to homesbyshane.com for more information. Let's get you home. If you would like to sponsor the Boots and Backstraps podcast or you have an interest in joining our team, send us an email to bootsandbackstrapspodcast at gmail.com. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, hunters uh, and hunters. People might have questions about that last <laughs> clip. Should we address that or not? Who no? was that uh, guy in the man bun? That uh, was me. That was me in the man bun, <laughs> rocking it rocking it proudly. Uh, and the other guy was the one that tried to kill you with electricity, right? <laughs> yes, that's my brother-in-law, Charlie. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're, uh, we're painting the, uh, the new studio uh, that, uh, that uh, Danny works at. Danny, what is uh, what's that studio called? Uh, it's called The Hive House. The Hive House. Or is that The Hive Studio? Uh oh. That'll be at location two of the Hive House, so the Hive House studio. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, they had me uh, repainted for them. It was just a, it used to be a ballet studio. So I'm like, yeah, I'm bringing the paint sprayer for sure. We're going to get that done fast. Yeah. So, well, when we left, we were talking about you in this transition of taking over stuff at Rodeo Nightclub. Oh, sure. And we talked about, I actually kind of in reverse order before that, we talked about TK retiring, mm-hmm. you and I coming in with this new concept of Rowdy Cowboy Show. Maybe you could just. Talk a little bit about how that, from your perspective, since I sort of, sort of shared from my perspective, us finding that lightning in a bottle and kind of what what happened with that. Well, my favorite part about about that was when uh, was when Tom called me and he said, "Hey, uh, I need you to fill in tonight. Got this kid." Tom shit. calling you. That was his favorite part. <laughs> you got got this uh, got this uh, kid named Shane. He knows my format. He looked at his wife and he went, "Hey, it's Burt Reynolds," <laughs> <laughs> or something, or something. <laughs> um, and. Uh, and so uh, I went in there, and uh, it, you and I met right when we got there, which nobody knew that. Everybody thought that we knew each other. Right. I and thought you knew each other. No. no. Not a, n- <laughs> never, never met. Never met. And, uh, and so we, uh, we, we did the show, and um, I just uh, – we, we kind of talked about it a little bit. He said, yeah, here, you know, here are the things we got to hit, and otherwise just kind of do what you do. And I said, okay. And so I, I just started doing what I know. And, uh, and, and a, a lot of the crowd, I knew, who, I knew them, they knew them from rodeo. So right. it was a pretty easy transition for me or, or like just to at least keep, keep them entertained. And, uh, it was challenging for me because I didn't know you knew everybody the way that you did. Mm-hmm. Having never met you before, I was like, who is this guy? I don't know what you know or don't know if you're any good, if you're going to be, you know, a piece of crap or whatever. Yep. So I'm like, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty good at ad living. I'm just going to sit back and kind of watch you and play off of what you're doing. I didn't know that uh, as part of your uh, format that you didn't uh, do like a DJ MC combo because I saw you on the dance floor a lot and whoever was helping you was up in the booth. Right. I, I, I just thought you, you like like you acted as more of an MC throughout the night. I, I didn't I didn't really know. Yeah. And uh, so I uh, so basically handed the sh- the microphone to Shane and I said I said go you know go ahead and and uh, we'll just you know bounce back and forth. 
and we did, and and it it almost sounded like like we had worked together before because the bouncing was really was really good, and uh, the thing that that uh, was my favorite was after the show, Shane walks up to me, and goes, "Look, man, I don't really know who you are, and I don't know where you came from, but you and me, we're cut from the same cloth, the same <laughs> DJ cloth. So I think we got something here. Uh, can we can we talk about this? I'm like, I go, sure. You said." In the next uh, couple months, um, you know, Tom's retiring, and and uh, I think that we should do this together. And yeah, it's, it, it's amazing to me yeah. how this whole transition worked. It was hilarious throughout the night. I have been known to say a funny thing or two, and every time I'd say something, I would just say something in general humor, and KG would take it to a whole new level, and then even make it dirty from time <laughs> to time. And people were dying laughing throughout the night. You could see even the staff in the bar; they're distracted because. The servers are supposed to be taking drink orders or taking food orders or whatever, and they're stopping and they're watching us because it was so funny. Yeah, that's and, uh, great. Yeah, and, and then as soon as we got into, um, after a couple months of us just you know working that out, uh, we ended up you know having a shtick that we knew we knew where each other stood on on what we're going to do, and so that's where our version of the Roddy Cowboy Show you know, came to came to life. Yeah, yeah. So, it's a great story. Sure was a a relief for me to be able to walk away knowing that someone uh, capable was doing it. Yeah. Because, um, you know, I had an interest in the hog's breath for many, many years. Mm-hmm. Tommy and I are such close friends, and I was with him uh, in the beginning uh, when he opened it, and um, I just really, it was such a... I mean, when the, in, in the high, t- it was the biggest night of the week. Monday night was the biggest night, bigger than the weekends. We did a rock and roll. You know, it's an interesting story. Uh, we did a rock and roll night on Tuesday nights, and it was 93 crazy. X night. Crazy. You know, that's when Van Halen was huge and ACDC and rock and roll, Bob Seeger. You know, I mean, we had just great rock and roll material. Well, every Tuesday night, that place was packed to the walls. And I would always throw in a Charlie Daniels song or a Leonard Skinner song or some really crazy rock and roll type countries. And then the the crowd, which was already crazy, would go berserk. And I watched this for a few weeks and I thought, you know, Tom, I think I can, we could do a separate night devoted to rowdy country. And the first night we did it, the place was full. And I can never forget a guy that I knew threw his hat down on the da- dance floor, and he did a Mexican hat all Mexican hat dance all the way around the rim with his nice cowboy hat. Smashed it, and everyone was just losing their minds, having a ball with these great high energy country classics. And uh, the second week that we did it, line out the door, and it was that way for over thirty years. Unbelievable. I mean, so we had this unbelievable country night and this unbelievable rock and roll night, which I eventually turned over to another disc jockey. And the rock and roll night lasted for 35, 40 years as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so for him... Like Monday make, nights it was leather boots and then Tuesday nights it was leather jackets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was uh, you know, for Tom, who's one of the greatest guys in the world, uh, to have that income coming in on traditionally the two slowest nights of the week you know really saved that entire club nightclubs like that don't last more than a couple years and his is now into its 44th year amazing it is amazing it's i mean i'll never forget you know in our heyday all the time almost every week there was a club owner from a different part of the united states and other countries that would come to the hog's breath and see what was going on how does a club get this many people in there on a Monday night mm-hmm. when typically you can't get anybody in a club? Can so I can I make a statement here? You bet. All right. So they're starting their forty fourth year this year. You said, yeah, yeah. For their forty fifth year, for their forty fifth anniversary, I would love to do a show with you guys. We're throwing it out there now. Put it out there. Oh, into we're the definitely universe. doing a show, and you're definitely invited. I'll we see. were going to do. I think that would be. We hey, do I'm a, in. Yeah, I'm in. Danny, Danny's in. Danny's in, and. We That's were going to do, because I didn't start the show 44 years ago, we were going to do a 40th anniversary of my show 
last year last summer but with covid obviously that didn't happen so now we're planning on doing that this summer depending on how things open up and how the covid hopefully it'll fade maybe even by late summer we're going to do one on a Saturday night or a Friday night at the high talk stuff. to Tom and maybe we can get the uh, the back parking lot a, bi- a big old tent we'll make it a make it a big thing oh yeah it's going to be a big thing yeah we've talked about it already yeah. I mean because we were going to do it last year so absolutely uh, for those of you that are familiar with the old rowdy cowboy show uh, this summer we're going to do a we're gonna get the band back together. <laughs> <laughs> We're like letting all these secrets out I now. Know, you know, you know the hardest part about uh, about Tom retiring is that Tom wasn't there. Getting the smell out of the DJ. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it was, like, it was uh, so frustrating. Could you tennis ball? <laughs> He's flying solo. Like here. it took us forever to get that Old Spice odor out of the. <laughs> <laughs> it was so. It was. It was. Uh, at first, it, it at first it was a. Uh, it, it was not a huge deal, but then a couple months into it where people hadn't been to your show for a while and they show up and they're like, uh, where's Tomcat? Uh, he retired. Ugh. And then and the they, they storm off. A bunch of them got to know us and get, well, we, we, we had stormed to off up. like with their walkers. They'd <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Sorry, I was on a roll. Uh, <laughs> get, one, get one more in there. Uh, but uh, it, it, so it was uh, it, like it was it, it was always, well, hey, you're, well, you're, bitch. Like, you're not Tom. <laughs> You're not Tom. Yeah. We nope. got that a lot. Actually. Nope, we're not. We're not Tom. We're not Tom. Yeah. And then, and and then, I get to watch it all over again when when Shane retired, and uh, and and Danny G became the new the new MC, and everybody would walk up and go, "Well, where is Shane?" And mm-hmm. and we're like, like, "Oh no, he he retired. It's uh, it's myself and Danny G now." And they're like, "Well, but well, but where is Shane?" And we we had to do that for. Uh, for for months, you know, yeah. months on end, see the same deal, and so you know, you know, replacing you know replacing legends is tough, and so I I'll I'll say I'll definitely say I don't that know for about you. a legend, infamous. I, I think I've said it uh, before. Whenever somebody gets crazy and says something like that, I say, all right, well, there's a fair amount of people that know who I am, and most of them have a drinking problem. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I use it in my real estate business all the time. I just tell them when they ask me the transition I went, because in addition to the music stuff, obviously I was a a residential home builder by day, residential contractor. And, uh, and so people are like, how'd you make this transition out of contracting into real estate and having the real estate business going as well as it is for us now? Mm -hmm. And I say, well, it helped that I was a Z level celebrity before, Oh yeah. you know, (laughs) one or two people were familiar with who I was. And so. To just say, hey, I'm not, I'm still drinking Jack Daniels, but I'm not, you know, at the bar at 2 a.m. anymore. Now I'm helping people buy houses or you, sell houses. I, I want to piggyback back on that because um, I the success that I'm having with T. George and Tears would yeah. never be what it is if I didn't have uh, as many um, supporters of of me uh, out there. You know, whether it be you know friends on Facebook or um, or just people I've met along the way. I mean, my phone still rings off the hook with, you know, people, you know, needing stuff done, you know, like, that I've met along the way as part of DJing. So, mm-hmm. and I, and I know your business, um, it has done well because of that as well. Yep, just the exactly. amount of people that you've got to have some face time with, uh, has, has really helped. So, you know, anybody watching that, uh, um, you know, I, I appreciate, I appreciate, uh, you know, uh, you reaching out and stuff like that. It's been fantastic. One of the biggest hurdles you have as a small business owner, and Tom, I know you know this all too well, having owned several businesses in your life in addition to Rowdy Cowboy Show, <laughs> that one of the biggest hurdles you have to clear is trust. Yeah. And so once you have that trust established, then regardless of what it is you're doing, you have that personal mm-hmm. connection with somebody, they're going to go to you when they need it. Well, certainly being a disc jockey, as we've all been, you know, you meet hundreds and hundreds of people, and it's that personality factor like you have it that's one of the reasons i gravitated towards you is you have that personable personality where you know how to talk to people and if you don't have that it doesn't matter how many people you meet you're just going to wind up with a lot of people that think you're a dick yeah (laughs) right but if you have a personality like yours and a personality I, i loved loved interacting with other people i still love that i miss that about the restaurant that lynn and i owned uh, we've met so many hundreds of people that we just closely interacted with and mm-hmm. made good friends with, and 
you know that I, I I have to I think my wife would agree that was such a big part of owning a restaurant or being a dish jockey the interaction and the social aspect mm -hmm. of both of those business was the biggest part of it it wasn't about making the money right and it certainly wasn't about uh, bossing a bunch of employees around it was about <laughs> the fun people and Lynn just got a birthday note from some, a couple of our old employees from Red Oak and we used to do a Red Oak reunion every year and we're going to do one this summer and we still have about 30 people that'll show up for our Red Oak and that which is amazing restaurant's been closed I don't know 10 years yeah it's probably 10 years yeah mm -hmm. yeah and so I'm sorry no. I, you know that might not be that interesting, but it's from my heart, you know, the, the people that you meet and the friends that you maintain over the years from the restaurant business, from the disc jockey business. Uh, you have the personality, kid, and you have the personality. And Well, it's uh, relevant because deal. here we are sitting together now doing a podcast. Right. And that's a result of this connection that we made forever ago. Right, right. I, I, had, a, I had a bit of a uh, hurdle to go over uh, when it came to my uh, – you know, like you have to earn that trust and yeah. earn that trust and so and and you know and people people know me from the show but at, at the show uh, I'm a wild child I I you know like I'm DJ with no pants on I'm I you know I, I'll the guy that I'm I'm the guy that will take that step a little the too mohawk yeah I'll take that step too far that that I, you know that is is my persona you know Shane Shane's job is to wrangle me back in and my job is to jump o jump over that line and then he pulls me back in mm -hmm. and so when like, like over yeah, the, we're gonna over, get to this, Danny. I'm, it, I'm, this is where we're going next. <laughs> over the years, uh, <laughs> over the years, uh, do, it, it, the number one thing I, that people say to me when, um, you know, like I, I, I used to do a lot of weddings. Now I'm trying not to do it any right. anymore. Uh, but the number one pe thing people say was, "You're gonna have to keep your pants on." <laughs> and I'm like, I don't. I'm quite <laughs> sure I've said that to you more than once. But you, you, you have. <laughs> I, I've ignored what you said, but uh, but at, at weddings, I'm like, yeah, no, of course, of course, of course. And some people actually have said, uh, you're gonna take your pants off, right? I'm like, you want me to take your my pants off at your wedding? They go, yeah, that's you. I'm like, that's weird, but we can do this. All right, <laughs> you're paying me. Well, one of the things I was gonna was gonna uh, get into with you here, KG, is we did a lot of fun stuff with Rowdy Cowboy Show and sort of the, the newer version after. Tom rode off into the sunset. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we did a lot of really cool shows and, and met a lot of cool people. But one of the cool things that that you got involved with was being able to go out on tour with Kenny Chesney and do all of his pre and after parties for his tour that summer. It was actually just pre parties, but it was uh, the ra it was a radio pre party. So I got to go uh, with different radio stations two days before the concert oh. and do a big party. Okay. And no, I'm sorry, the day before the concert. And uh, and then the day of the concert, I would be right out in front of the stadium uh, with the big tour bus yeah. uh, with uh, Kenny's face on it and everything else. Um, yeah, let's talk about how that came together and then maybe share some stories of stuff that you how experienced did that on your own tour. Well, so uh, how I understand it, because Shane fielded the phone call, um, while, while the uh, No Shoes Nation uh, tour was in Minnesota – um, the DJ that they had, which which was a very good DJ, and this is uh, only like one date into the tour, right? Uh, like very no, early in the tour. I, it was about halfway through. Oh, okay. It, it was about halfway through. I missed all the fun stuff down in Florida and stuff like that. Okay. Um, but because uh, I mean they were they, they were on the beach. Uh, oh, wow. I saw all the pictures. I'm like, oh, that would have been so cool. Yeah. Uh, but uh, while they were in Minnesota, um, the DJ had to be let go uh, for bad decisions, and. Um, the, and the guy who did he take his pants off? Uh, he did. <laughs> and your decisions were better than his. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oddly, better. oddly enough. Uh, and uh, so, um, and the and the guy who ran, who ran all this, uh, uh, his name was uh, Brett Palmer. I know and, who that is. Yeah. Th yep. And uh, and so, uh, and so he's from Minnesota, from St. Paul. Right. And what? And so the whole tour is in 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 Minnesota at the time. And so right away he's like, all right, I gotta figure this out. And he, he basically just, you know, looked into what's the the biggest country act around right now, you know, uh, for for a DJ. And I mean, we were we're by far the it, we we were essentially the only one. Anybody? We had people trying to copy our act in other areas of the market. We were hearing sure. about it. Yeah. Oh yeah. And calling it similar names, but right. you know, never picked up any. I ran across a guy, a disc jockey named Tomcat. What? And when he met me, he was really embarrassed. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you know, our show was, you know, 
famous all over the United States. Maybe not famous, but known about. Yeah. So, yeah, they were trying to copy my show, and I know they were trying to copy your show. Yep. Uh, did you know Robin West? I don't that think was so. Kenny's road manager. Um, oh, um, Robin was just the greatest guy, and he. Uh, I, you know, I'm not. So when when it came to when it issues. came to stuff like that, um, I. So so here was my job. Uh, I did I had to do the pre parties, and then once my, my once the pre parties were done, I would go I would DJ into the very first act, which was uh, Marin Morris, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and then. And then from there it was Eli Young Band, and then from there it was Eric Church, and then it was and then it was Kenny, and I never got to see Eli Young Band perform or or sure. uh, um that was awesome <laughs> or uh <laughs> or uh um Eli Young Band or Marin Morris. I'm Are sorry. you distracted? Yes, <laughs> I'm very distracted. It's yeah. funny you're trying to watch somebody <laughs> juggle with one ball. <laughs> this is one of the benefits of having a three camera setup. If you get a, if you get, a, I couldn't stop. Watching. If you got to get resituated, you wait till the producer switches the camera. But then your people that are on the podcast just let it all out anyway. I, I, I couldn't do it. Um, so be so, a professional, kid, George. I'm sorry. <laughs> So uh, I, I I never got to see those guys. People that are on the like listening only, where well, they don't have the video feed. Oh, we're back to the Three Stooges. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So you never got to listen to any of the opening acts. Nope. I could hear them. I could hear them through the uh, you know through the PA on the outside of the stadium, whether it was a you know a, a domed place or not. Um, but uh, uh, so I, I never got to see any of that stuff. I would be putting my gear away and then going back to the tour bus and right. The, and Brett was already waiting with a bottle of. Uh, of uh, Fireball and we we were, and we were sponsored Parrot Bay, when the, uh, uh, Blue Chair Bay, Blue Chair Bay, Blue Sorry. Chair Bay rum, which is yep. which is Kenny's rum. That's a professional. Yep. And then uh, and then um, Coronas, the Corona Corona Light, I think yep. was yep. the. Uh, You're exactly right. Yep. And then uh, and then Costa Shades. So I got a real sweet pair of sunglasses that I wore for years and years. I finally just broke them, but apparently I can send them in and they're gonna send me a new pair. Nice. Um, that'd be. I mean, oh, they were like two hundred thirty bucks. Wow. Um, they just they go for being on the tour. Wear them while you perform. I'm like, okay. The worst part is they were uh, uh, they were polarized, and sure. I, and I have a These are. and I have a computer screen. Mm-hmm. Guess what? You can't see anything. It's just a blank screen when you wear yeah. polarized lenses. Right, right. So I'm like, well, I have to wear cheap ones, otherwise it doesn't work out. <laughs> but uh, but I mean, so that was uh, that was kind of my responsibilities in the tour, and I got to sleep on that tour bus that had Kenny's face on on it. And uh, the worst part about that bus because it was so cool. Was people well, chased on you second. all around town? One second before we get to that. So when they called and oh, they sure. said, "You know, we need a DJ for the tour," and I was like, "Oh, do I have the guy for you?" Yeah. I mean, this is right in our heyday. We're in our prime, mm-hmm. and KG's rocking a mohawk at every show, and almost always taking his pants off. He's wearing shorts all the time anyway. And I'm like, this guy is like he he literally was the perfect fit for what they wanted for that tour, and so they you know we I got uh, Brett and and. KG connected and they worked out the details and then he went out on tour. That was, That's fun. I wish you would awesome. have been doing that when we had Kenny Chesney at the We Fest. He was absolutely the funnest act we could have at the We Fest. When you all had the years, Eric he, Church. Remember when you had Eric yeah, Church at the We yeah. Fest? Uh, I was. Uh, um, uh, that was during that tour. Oh. And and I got to and um, they worked it out where I could fly out from Fargo, so I went to. Um, we I, fast. I went to WeFest and I got to see Eric Church, and then from there they flew me out to Georgia. And when I got there, so instead of Eric Church being on on that tour uh, for that night, they had Zach Brown, which Zach oh, Brown is my favorite. My favorite, yeah. I I love I that love whole band. Zach Brown, and you know what else? He's a big bow hunter, and we had a long talk. He was shooting away. He'll be here next week. No, he like what? Zach Brown, man, what a I can't say enough. I just gush about Zach Brown band. Been in music all my life, and Zach Brown's the greatest. Yeah. But what I was going to say, and I was started to say, was uh, when we had Kenny Chesney, uh, twice that we had him, you know, his, his stage manager was the greatest stage manager of all the bands I've ever worked with. They would set up a bar, and uh, they'd do like a patio on our, well, we had a huge stage. They were cooking hamburgers and brats, and, Corona lights and they did all that backstage. They're all like, "What are you doing over here? Go over there and you know help yourself." Pina coladas. I mean, they had mm-hmm. a motorized 
I mean, gas motorized blender for pina coladas. Uh, and, I mean, it was like, God, they wanted everyone, on th- all of the crew was welcome to partake in pina coladas, Corona Lights, bratwurst, yep. hamburgers. The whole crew was the fantastic. the funnest crew yeah. ever. Well, KG, you know, we're, we're getting up against the clock here, but I sure. want you to just, if you can, take a few minutes to share a story or two of some of the fun experiences you have when you're on that tour. Uh, yeah. It, uh, for me, I was, I was pretty starstruck uh, uh, across the whole thing because – uh, I've, you know, through my life, I've come across some famous people, mm-hmm. got to meet them. It's been, it's been pretty cool. But my very first day, uh, I, f- I flew in. It was really early in the morning. I ended up staying up way too late. I think I was getting this tattoo done, to be honest with you. Uh, and then I got, got on the plane, showed up at, you know, 6 a.m. I'm real tired. And, uh, and they get me back to the bus and they go, they go, do you want to go have breakfast in the, in the stadium? I'm like, sure, let's do that. And so he brings me in, he gives me a little tour, and he said, this is what you can do at all the stadiums. You just show them your pass, and then you could go in, and there's a, there's a chef that making you food and everything else. It was fan- It was so cool. And uh, so we sit down, and we start eating, and then the place fills up with people. And um, when I say fills up, I mean it was pretty – it was full. It was full. So I'm eating, and I keep bumping elbows with this guy behind me as he pulls arm, his arm back. I pull my arm back, and we keep bu- literally bumping elbows. And, uh, and I keep going, I'm sorry. He was like, no, man, that was me. That was me. And, and then uh, Brett, tur- he, goes, he goes, hey, do you, know who, do you know who that is? And I said, no, I didn't. I didn't look. He goes, he goes that's, uh, that's uh, um, oh, what is his name? <laughs> Eli. Eli, yeah, Eli. Uh, yeah. Oh, what the, uh, from the Eli Young Band? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah. He, like, he, they, like, it was it, like, he just right, like, we're bumping elbows the entire time, the lead singer. And I'm like, I'm like oh, I, I didn't even realize we're just literally smashing elbows. <laughs> and then, uh, then a couple hours, uh, co- or the next day, um, he's like, yeah, you can just walk backstage and just hang out backstage, which you have plenty of experience backstage. Um, I, I, I had never been. So I'm standing there. And, uh, right when I got up there, I had already missed Eli Young Band and, uh, um, um uh and and Mary Morris and uh Eric Church is supposed to be playing and the band is just rocking but I don't hear any lyrics so back and backstage it's harder to hear some of the lyrics right, anyways right. cuz the speakers aren't aimed that way yeah and so I'm like oh like I I'm just looking around I'm like I don't I don't see them uh, I, I, I like I maybe I'm in a bad spot and I look over and literally right here he's standing next to me putting his earpiece in <laughs> and I'm like oh. Eric Church yeah and I'm like Oh my god! I pull my phone out and I'm like, click, click, click. Just, just start snapping some pictures. And he's just standing right next to me, putting his earbud in. And then, and as I'm doing that, my boss just, just kind of pushes my hand down slowly. He goes, he goes, you're gonna see him every week. Don't be a fanboy. I'm like, all right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the other, that's one of the things that the other DJ got in trouble. Uh, he like he was chasing these uh, chasing these guys down backstage for a picture and stuff oh. like that. And he's like. He's like, just be a professional about this. So I never, I never got Leave any pic- your pants on. Yeah, I never got any pi- pictures with anybody. <laughs> Don't do that. And, but uh, I, you know, I stood backstage and like from, you know, from where we're sitting from each other, I, you know, snapped some pictures of, you know, Eric Church or Kenny or anything like that. And uh, um, and then, but my favorite was when I was backstage and uh, and then Zach Brown came back there oh. and that was super cool. And then. Uh, at the end of his set, I just I walked back into the st- into the back of the stadium where all the artists go, and went back to the bar, grabbed myself another drink or two, and I was walking back, and I just got into a conversation with a guy, with with a guy, and I realized right away that it's it was uh, Zach Brown's drummer, and him and I sat there talking for like an hour, just having you know, having drinks, and uh, I'm like, man, this is. This is cool. Yeah, this is cool. They're human beings. They are. They oh, are. Gosh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and you got to treat them as as such. But uh, uh, the the picture that Danny uh, keeps uh, uh, keeps popping up on the screen um, was the last leg of the uh, of the tour, which w- uh, ended in um, in New England, yeah. and that's where they always end their tour. And uh, and the cool part about that it was, I think I think. Um, lobster is that is that their big thing out there? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So when I went there when I go. when I went when I went backstage for dinner, which I had never really done the whole time, I just 
just kind of skipped it. Here's you they with your mohawk on stage. They had a pile of lobster, just freshly cooked oh, lobster, like man. full of lobsters, which I have never had a full lobster. I've had lobster tail. I've had claws, but I've never had a full lobster. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? They go, oh, break it apart. And I do. And, like, all everything comes pouring out of it, which is disgusting. And I'm like, I have no idea how to eat this thing. I look so stupid out there. <laughs> I look so stupid, but it was it was really cool. Um, lobster and crab legs. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, they, and and you could and you could go back and get as many as you wanted. It was wow. it was nuts, but uh, um, so so at the very end, um, because I didn't have anything to do after I was done playing music, I just got to wander around, drink, and just do nothing. Great gig. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So I I asked the guys that were on the bus who were uh, they did a lot of the merch and stuff like that. I said, uh, I said, can I help you guys with anything? They go, you want to ball up T-shirts? You want to go on stage and, and throw them out there, or we'll give you a, uh, a T-shirt cannon? Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'll throw them. And they go, they go, sure, come on out on stage. I'm like, are you serious? Because right before, <laughs> right before Kenny goes out there, they go out there and they pump up the crowd, right, throw right. T-shirts and everything else. And then as we run off the stage, the lights dim and the music starts going. And uh, so I did that for a couple dates. Uh, so I look forward to it every time. And the last time I was out there, um, I was I was wearing that Costa shirt, and I start and I was I was chucking them, and I was and I was and I was I was giving them the Hulk Hogan, you know, where I'm like, oh, I can't hear you, and like people are screaming, <laughs> and there's sixty thousand people out there it was for crazy. a T-shirt. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I was I was I was laughing it up, having a great time, and I, I threw all, threw them all, and I turn around, there's a guy with a camera, and like like getting ready to take take my picture, so I spun around open up my arms and smile and then that's the that's a great picture oh it's it's it, it was, just shows so much fun oh yeah. yeah and it's gillette stadium in the background yeah yeah i mean i mean look how many people are behind me i i mean that, and that's what i that's what i wore every day to work and it was so much fun those are my costa shades a couple of those girls down there i think they're looking at your butt i'm not sure yeah like, they <laughs> might be you wore it every day and you never even watched the it. girl that's on the on <laughs> just below your bottom your left or right she took her glasses off to look at your butt <laughs> look at that caboose look at that, look caboose. At that booty <laughs> well you know what boys it has been so much fun and i feel like we literally have just scratched the surface of all the stuff that we could talk about kg and yeah. so we definitely tk need to have him back yeah absolutely this is a uh, one of the funnest ones we've done. Yeah. We, so we're going to get you on the slate again here sometime in the near future so we can get back into it. Because there's a whole lot more that we could talk about with this tour and fun stuff that we did with Rowdy Cowboy Show and, yeah. you know, just KG stories in general. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for joining us, man. Oh, anytime. Really appreciate you uh, making a little time. I know you're busy with work and with the family, so it means a lot to have you it's here. It's a nice vacation, and it comes with whiskey and beer. And wine. And, and, and I do have a wine. I did say I, I, I like a wine, so I'll be here for a little while, I guess. Yeah. Well, folks, thanks a lot for joining us for another episode of Boots and Backstraps. Don't forget to uh, send us your questions to Boots and Backstraps podcast at gmail.com. And uh, we're going to probably pick some questions out of those to uh, maybe read on future episodes and also potentially pick a lucky fan to come sit in studio with us for an episode airing or an episode filming, I guess it would be technically. So, uh, and hopefully we'll have some WeFest tickets to give away. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have all kinds of fun stuff with new sponsorship and things like that coming on board. We've got a lot more to talk yeah. about in the future. Uh, TK, let's bring this plane in for a landing. You got it, pal. Ladies and gentlemen, whether you're belting out your favorite country song or pursuing your favorite game animal, I encourage you to use that same enthusiasm to pursue the Lord. He'll teach you to shoot straight. Thanks for coming, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Come on now. Honey's on, looking for bag straps. Way deep in the woods. Tracking in a swamp to a hay field under the harvest moon. When the tags are filled, it's time to switch up our boots. Head down to the honky tonk, get us a swing dance or two. We're talking about boots and bag straps. <laughs>